Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you follow me over on Instagram, I shared on my stories that I found vinyl and tools at the Dollar Tree a couple weeks ago. This is the Crafters Square brand and these have been showing up in Dollar Trees for a little while now. And I finally found some at mine. I was so excited. I bought some and went back the next day and all of it was gone. So I think it can be hard to find. I'll show you what I picked up test them out and I'll give you my thoughts on it if you happen to find it at your own Dollar Tree. I found yellow, green, and buffalo plaid vinyl. It says that it is permanent. I believe they also carry removable vinyl, but I didn't see any at my store. The size of these rolls are 12 inches by 48 inches, which is the same size as the Cricut vinyl, so that is a good amount for just $1. They had different color glitter vinyl. I found this pink one, which is permanent, and it's also 12 inches by 48 inches. They are selling transfer tape as well now. The size for the roll is 12 inches by 36 inches, so it comes with just a little bit less. I also found new tools that can be used with cutting machines. I found what they call the craft picker, the spatula, and the scraper. I'll use these with the materials and see how it compares to the Cricut tools that I normally use, but for just a dollar, I would probably grab these if you see them. The last thing I picked up is this cutting mat, and oh my gosh, the quality of this is amazing for just one dollar. This is also the Crafter Square brand. I found it in the same section. If you see this, I would definitely snag one. The size of the mat is nine by seven, so it's a little smaller, but I've heard that people are buying a few of these and taping the back together to make one big cutting mat. First, I'm going to open the tools and compare them to the Cricut tools. The Dollar Tree ones do come with different colors. I'm just not sure what colors they have. Here's what the Dollar Tree weeding tool looks like. It looks very similar to the Cricut one. The Dollar Tree tool is a little longer than the Cricut one. I like how the Dollar Tree weeding tool comes with little indents on the sides to hold on to when you're weeding. The Cricut one is a little heavier than the Dollar Tree one, but looking at the actual weeding tool piece, they look very similar. Next, I'm just opening up the spatula tool. The Dollar Tree one, once again, has those indents in it to grasp onto. The main difference with these is the actual part of the spatula. The shape of these are a little different and the Dollar Tree one is much flatter than the Cricut one. I'm not sure if that would make much of a difference when using it or not. Now I'm opening the Dollar Tree scraper tool and here it is compared to the Cricut one. The shape is just a little different but honestly it looks very similar to the Cricut tool. I also love that these have holes in them just like the Cricut tools do. I hang all of my tools on a pegboard so I can hang these up as well. It's just a great way to store your tools and easily access them. First, I'm just going to open up the green, yellow, and buffalo plaid vinyl. And my first impression when opening it up is I'm actually really impressed. For just a dollar, I can't believe how big of a roll you get. And it's very flexible and pliable, so I am pretty happy with it so far. One thing I want to mention is it is thinner than other permanent adhesive vinyl that I've used. Next, I'm opening up the glitter vinyl, and I was surprised too by this. It is really pretty, and the only thing that I would say again is it definitely is on the thinner side. The last thing that I need to open up is the transfer paper, and I am just going to test this out later in this video. I'm in Cricut Design Space and I'm going to do a test cut before I actually cut out an image and use the transfer tape to apply it to something. What I like to do when I do test cuts is grab a shape. I used to grab circles, but I feel like the star actually helps really figure out if it's cutting well. Test cuts are really nice to do if you're using a new material or something that you're not used to cutting. It helps you figure out what setting works the best without wasting a whole bunch of material since we all know that any type of material can get expensive. 
For the sizing, you don't wanna make it too big because you don't wanna to waste too much of your vinyl. So I like to do between one to two inches. I think I'm just gonna try two inches for it. I'm cutting it out on yellow vinyl, so I'm just gonna switch it to yellow. When I shared my Instagram stories of finding this vinyl, I got several messages from people telling me what worked for them, so I'm very thankful for that. So the two settings that were commonly suggested was vinyl setting on low pressure and the washi sheet setting. So I'm just gonna test it out on the vinyl setting first on low pressure. I'll just select vinyl, then I'll go over to where it says pressure, it says default, and I am going to select less. I'm using my green mat, but you might want to use your blue mat. You want the vinyl to be able to stick down really well onto the mat, but you also want it to be able to pick up easily. So I would just kind of test out both and see which one works the best for you. There's a few bubbles in the vinyl, but I just took my brayer tool and got those out with that. I load my vinyl into the Cricut machine and it'll cut out the star. As you can see, the Cricut cut through the backing of part of the star and with vinyl, you want it to have that kiss cut type of cut. So you don't want it to go all the way through the backing. So I decided to try a different setting. Since the vinyl setting didn't quite give us that kiss cut type of cut, I am going to try the washi sheet setting. Also, if I go to my material settings and scroll all the way down, here's my vinyl setting. It's set to 107. If you go down to washi sheet setting, it is set to 85. So it's a little bit less for the cut pressure. So that might work better than the vinyl, vinyl setting. So I'm gonna go back to browse all material and select the washi sheet setting. I'm just cutting my vinyl down here just to make it a little easier to place it on the mat. Once again, the Cricut will cut out the star. The washi sheet setting was definitely better, but you can see it did just barely cut through a little bit on that same side. I don't know what's up with that side, but it definitely was better, just not quite right yet. So what I'm gonna do is go to browse all material and I'm going to go back to my material settings. I'm going to scroll down to washi sheet and I'm going to come over here and hit edit. It's set to 75. I'm gonna bring it down to the lowest that we can have it cut, which looks like is 70. And I'm going to give that a try. I'm going to hit save. And when you save that, you also need to click done for it to actually save the setting. We adjusted our setting, but you still have to go back in and select that. So I'm gonna search for washi sheet and select this, then hit done. The cut pressure is going to be 70 instead of 85 for this one. That cut so much better this time. You can see that it didn't cut through the backing. It was a little close on that side still, but definitely a lot better. Changing the washi sheet setting to 70 worked great to cut that, but I don't wanna have to remember to change it every single time I use the Dollar Tree vinyl. So what I'm going to do is create my own setting, which is pretty cool that you can do that on here. What you'll do is go to Browse on Materials, then you'll go back to material settings. I'm first gonna scroll back down to my washi sheet setting. It's still set to 70 and I wanna bring it back to what it's normally at. So I'm going to click edit again. And all you have to do is right here, there's a button that says reset. Just select that and it'll take it back to 85. You can see right here. If you click edit again, you can see it brings it back to the original cut setting. But now what I'm going to do is go down to add new material. It says new material name. I'm gonna type in Dollar Tree Vinyl. Then I'm going to hit save. This is in alphabetical order and it brings me to this new setting. It automatically sets it to 175, but I'm gonna bring it all the way down to 70, which looks like it's the lowest cut setting on the Cricut. And I am going to hit save. Now you can see right here we have our new setting, the Dollar Tree Vinyl, and I'm gonna scroll all the way down and hit Done. 
I still have my buffalo print pattern vinyl and my glitter vinyl. I am going to try both of those out with this new setting that I created. So I'm just going to type in dollar or dollar tree. I'll select that and hit done. I am testing out the buffalo pattern first and that setting worked great for that. Then I test out the glitter vinyl. I wasn't sure if it was going to work for this one, but it actually worked perfectly for the glitter vinyl as well. I'm going to use the Dollar Tree weeding tool to weed out the vinyl that I just cut. I also want to mention that just because that cut setting works for me doesn't necessarily mean it'll work for you because the blades could be different or one might be more dull than the other and sometimes the Cricut machines vary a little bit so I would just recommend doing test cuts but the washi sheet setting would probably be a good place to start. The Dollar Tree weeding tool worked great. I would definitely pick that up for just a dollar if you see it. The funny thing, I was really excited about those little mar indent marks for your fingers and I didn't even use those though. I'm going to just choose a Cricut Design Space image. I'm just going to type in pumpkins and look for pumpkins since it's that type of season. So let me see. I think I'm just going to choose this one and hit insert image. The stem is a separate layer, so what I'm gonna do is just hit attach, and I'm just gonna do it all one color. I'm gonna make the image three inches wide, which is a pretty good size for my mug. Then I'm just going to hit make it. I'm going to select browse all materials, and I'm just gonna start typing, typing Dollar Tree. I'll select that and hit done. And here's how it cut. As you can see, it did not cut out the image that well. Three inches is pretty small and it did have some thinner cuts. I found another pumpkin and tried cutting that out. This size of the pumpkin was five inches and the cuts weren't as thin and it did cut just a little through the backing, but it seemed like it worked a lot better. Here I'm just weeding out the vinyl. Even though it did cut through the backing a little, it still weeded out fine. Now I'm going to try out this Dollar Tree transfer tape with the vinyl. I'm going to use the Dollar Tree scraper tool as well to burnish the transfer tape over the vinyl. I always like to scrape the backing of the vinyl and remove the backing instead of the front. It makes a big difference and the transfer tape picked up the vinyl pretty easily. I place the vinyl onto the mug and press it down really well. If you're placing vinyl on a curved surface, it helps to cut slits in the transfer tape to easily apply it. Then I started to remove the transfer tape and it was extremely difficult to remove it and keep the vinyl on the cup. I sped up the video here so it makes it look a little easier than it actually is. The transfer tape is extremely sticky. It might help to press the transfer tape against something first to make it less sticky, but I still wasn't a fan of the transfer tape. Here's how it looks. I let the transfer tape cure for 24 hours and I've washed it three to four times and so far it has stayed on really well. I think this vinyl will be great for stencils, so I decided to test out a stencil really quickly. I already had the Cricut cut this image out and it did a good job cutting it, but the size was five inches and it doesn't have any small cuts. You can see where in the same spot it's cutting through the backing a little, but not enough to affect it. I weed out the negative space of the image and add transfer tape to it. I decided to use my own transfer tape instead of the Dollar Tree one. I'm using a makeup sponge to add the paint. I like to use up and down motions when I paint and I start with a little paint first and add more slowly. 
Next, I remove the vinyl. I don't let the paint dry all the way before removing the stencil. I probably should have let it dry a little more because there was one spot that I got a little paint over it, but I got a little impatient. My camera battery died, so I added in a video from my phone, so that's why it looks different here. As you can see, the vinyl worked great for a stencil. Overall, I was actually impressed by the Dollar Tree vinyl. For just $1, you get a really good size roll. As you can see, it took me a while to figure out what setting to use. If you pick this up, I would definitely recommend giving the washi sheet setting a try. I also felt like it cut and weeded well as long as it wasn't too small, and it definitely didn't seem to work with any type of intricate cuts. I think it can have several uses, and it works great as a stencil if it's not too small. Personally, I wouldn't recommend picking up the transfer tape. It did not work that great for me at all. Also, I loved the tools. I would highly recommend snagging those. If you've already bought some of these items from the Dollar Tree, I'd love to hear what you've made with them and how you like them.